been hushed. I cannot speak. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Hi. Welcome in. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. We are the Nat 30s, or most of the Nat 30s, and this is. Whippy! Yep. <laughs> uh, this is. <laughs> This is our continuation of Hunted, a um, one-shot adventure actually created by Tony Petreca. Hopefully I said that last name correctly. Available on DMs Guild. This is actually Session 7. And uh, we've got Wicked Independent Prestige Incorporated who are on the case of this mystery. Um, uh, are they really? I think so. <laughs> So, hello everybody out in chat. We've got Bearded Fortress, Pint and Pie, A Falcone, Beluga, Das, 949. Those are the people that I saw. Miss Oreos. Who's. Oh. <laughs> yes. Oreos. Um, that is not one of, the, one of the people in chat, though. That's what one of the people in chat is going to eat. So. But, ever, but everyone loves Oreos. Who everyone like loves Oreos. Oreos. Mm -hmm. um, I know, I just said that. <laughs> so, we are going to be continuing with our uh, session tonight with Hunted. But first, we've got. Oh, hey, mm, Cheese Cat is also lurking. Uh, yeah, cheese. Yeah, cheese. Um, <laughs> so, so, cheese because that's how my dyslexia always right. reads it is as yeah. mixed. I, th I thought you were going like McCheese. 30s gangster, like cheese, mm. mm. cheese, cat, eh? He's just, he's just flicking, he's just flicking a nickel as he's leaning against a defense post. <laughs> My goodness. So we'll start with our announcements and kind of blast through those. Will we though? <laughs> that is the question. <laughs> Always. So will we blast through those announcements? Well, I'm going to start us off by telling you about our partners, the Compound Network, which is a collaborative of South Coast Massachusetts creatives, including 3D printers and mini painters and gamers. And I smashed my phone, and so I don't have the thing up, so I can't Oh, I do got it. it. I'll do it. But the Compound a compound and you see she spammed it somewhere in some direction <laughs> which includes our lovely partners like fusion forge 3d printing burrell 3d prints the brush republic counterclockwise and tabletop games did i miss anybody i did that off the top of my head but i think i memorized nice. it no I speaking think... of the tabletop games did i miss anybody i think i got everybody no, i think you I think you got everybody i think it nice right? look at that yeah. I don't even need it anymore. Except for the compound it. itself, but that's at the top, so it's well, fine. I mean, <laughs> I feel like that's like self-explanatory. But, oh, speaking of, anyways, speaking of tabletop games, go. Speaking of tabletop games, we have our word of the week, which is undetermined as of this moment. Um, when we come up with a word of the week, when we figure it out, something funny usually pops up in the chat, we'll throw it in there, and our local listeners can head over on into three stores that are affiliated and working with us. Uh, the Tabletop Games uh, in Westport as uh, Elar slash Annie. I totally forgot which game we were in right now. <laughs> I almost called her Micaiah. Um, tabletop Games in Westport. <laughs> <I know. laughs> this is unlimited power. Uh, the Armored Fairhaven or Twilight Comics in New Bedford. Go in there. Uh, Purchase all sorts of awesome stuff. Go to the front desk. Do your checkout. There'll be a little can with our pretty little faces on it. Write in whatever the word of the week is. Pop it in. You get entered into a chance to win a $10 gift card. It's cool stuff. Um, and it's not limited, so you can go to one, two, or hopefully all three. Uh, we encourage you guys to do that to help support the people that support us. They're really awesome for helping us out. Um, again, that's the tabletop tabletop games in Westport, the Armory in Fairhaven, and Twilight Comics in New Bedford. If you want to help us out a little bit more directly, uh, I'll toss it over to Pat, wherever he is. I think he's on my right. <laughs> and he'll tell you guys all about our super awesome Patreon. Yes, our Patreon. Uh, 
if you like what you see here tonight or any of the other nights, you can check out our Patreon for some behind the scenes, uh, different access uh, to like lore. I believe uh, both Erdnot and Oryx um, backstory uh, sheets are up there now, um, as well as you get early uh, two week early access to our VODs uh, before they go up on YouTube. Uh, as well as a free entry uh, into our monthly giveaway. And I believe we currently have one uh, spot left on our $5 plus. Is that correct? Yep. We still have one spot. If you'd like to uh, donate, um, uh, if you'd like to join our Patreon and uh, help uh, help us out, uh, you can get a sponsor card, which is right above Cuba's head right there. You'll see a few of our patrons um, that have uh, decided to help support us. You'll see them flicker through throughout the night. Um, but if you want to help support the stream uh, in a different way, I think it, I'm going to go around the world this way, toss it over to Cuba to tell you about our merch store. Merch store. We have a tea public. I don't think anybody tonight is wearing our merch, uh, but uh, Eric Firesong over there is wearing our uh, good uh, partner sponsors uh, be a D and D shirt. So a little plug to them that that's one of their newer designs, I believe. Mm -hmm. We were talking before we started how cool uh, it is, and because uh, the love of spindly dragons and whatnot. Uh, <laughs> and it's a genuinely comfortable. It's actually I think a Gildan soft style. I actually work in screen printing, so I can like fully appreciate the. The nice choice of uh, of garment that they yes. garment they actually like screen printed it on, which I believe the uh, the T Public also uses Gildan or very similar because like they're they're like both very yeah, like comfortable like I don't know just like good fitted shirts good quality shirts it's not like that uncomfortable boxy cotton like I can't stand those types of shirts. Yeah, they have a whole bunch of different lines of, of shirts, and yeah. thankfully, B D and D chooses chose like literally the most comfortable and best one there is, <laughs> the soft styles one. So I'm I'm all excited. So thanks, and that was Grim. Uh, Grim had actually won, and was like, you know what, give it to Art. So thank you so much. That was very sweet. I don't think she's in the chat today. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. But I'll have to make sure I shout shout them out when uh when they get in. So, yes, if you want to get our own comfortable merch, go over to our Tee Public. Check it out. There is a sale, last sale of April, tomorrow and Friday. So, go ahead, check it out. Everything is up to 30% off. All right. And uh, giveaways. There are a lot of giveaways going on. So, last week, we did a final giveaway for our friends over at True Black Forge, who are doing a... Um, Kickstarter. Just want to plug that there are only a couple more days, I think less than 48 hours um, to back this Kickstarter and get yourself some awesome uh, brass and iron TTRPG themed coins. They come with a backstory and a history and um, a map uh, of where they come from. So definitely worth it. They are gorgeous. Our last winner was Almost critical, actually. Hi, almost critical. All right, yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey. The beautiful symmetry of that of it all. <laughs> so, because speaking of, so this month's um, monthly giveaway is um, a set of dice from our friends over at Normal Human Designs. Uh, they are called the tw uh, Twilight Shower Petri um, dice set. And whoever wins, the winner, the one winner, gets to choose an ink color for the numbers on the dice. So you can enter as many times as you would like throughout the entire month. This is what we do every month. Um, just to put in some perspective, because I did some looking today, we have about 31 people who have entered into this month's giveaway, keeping in mind that all of our patrons get an automatic entry. And um, we've had we have 123 entries amongst those 31 people Holy so uh, you know well, it's also because like when you like interact in the discord like a certain amount you get like extra entries 
Yes, so we... Pays to be talking. Still, that, that's a lot of entries. <laughs> yep, there's a, you can enter as many times as you want when you interact in Discord. That raises your chances of getting an entry as well, because every time you level up, I add I add an entry to your, your um, to the list. Uh, who just redeemed it was Beluga. Oh, and... Mmm, cheese cat. Gotcha. Alright, so... Beluga and, and cheese cat. Um... So, I did want to say um, that we have almost critical... I, since this is our last game session... Oh, we got another one, Dasna. <laughs> Thank you for all of the entries. Thank you for participating and for hanging out with us. Um, so, we have... Um, this is our last session of the month. Then on Thursday, I'll be doing DM prep where me and Beluga are going to make her NPC. And then next month, we begin our next giveaway. And our friends at Almost Critical who are in the chat, I did want to share. Here is a preview of what next month's giveaway is. So we have a tin right here that has the Nat 30s and Almost Critical here at the bottom. Hey, Grim. Grim's in the chat. Roy. He had his headphones off. Oh my god, I love that. Oh, Grim's, oh, in, the chat. Grim's in the chat. Oh, Show man. off your shirt. Oh, Jesus. On or off? <laughs> no, what? Keep it on. <laughs> Show it off. Keep <laughs> that on. on. <laughs> dump them out. Dump them out. Dump them out. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have much to dump out. It's a white shirt. Just pour some water on your chest. Grim, he got his shirt. So thank you so much. Yep. Thank you so much. That was awesome. So we are going to take better pictures of this. We have a thing coming in, but I did want to share that the that next month's giveaway is this lovely set of dice that you can barely see. They look fantastic. They Don't are the gorgeous. <laughs> Fool you. <laughs> we'll be taking much better pictures and throwing them up on our um, Instagram and Twitter and then also having a card, as you see above Cuba's head, um, that will showcase what um, May's giveaway is, but it comes in this fantastic tin made by almost critical um and it is the giveaway of the month we also may have a second one that we will be adding to the list because we have been collaborating we with... will have we're just figuring out the details so we've been collaborating with a lot of different creators out there and we're happy to do that and share the love so um, we'll be having uh, someone else who also will be contributing something to the monthly giveaway. And we'll have to work out the details of how that's going to work. Maybe maybe one person gets the tin and the other thing. I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about it. Um, but thank you so much to Almost Critical who has donated this gorgeous set of dice that we will be taking pictures of and, and showing you. Um, I also got a special set of dice that are absolutely beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Um... And almost critical. Kind of jealous of those ones. They, they are like. Uh, I'm so glad that I chose yeah, them. Like, like, yeah, like, it, like she loves pink, and it's it's not like they're not. It, they're like what greenish. They're green, like the very deep color, hunter but, but green. Then like this flex of like almost like it looks in the right light. It looks like a rose gold, like numbers, and then like flexed in it. It's like they they are very beautiful. They are beautiful. We'll we'll take some some pictures of those as well, um, but I'm not giving those away. I'm keeping them, and I usually go for pink, like you said. I'm like pink all the way, but these ones, the gilded gilded wyvern. So almost critical. Please feel free to share your um, share your links in the chat and get everybody going we over going, to you. We were going through them in the Discord. We were going back and forth. And, oh yeah, oh, you're right. They're all. Mm -hmm. Fucking beautiful. Yes. They like, are we were gorgeous. trying to say like which ones we liked the most, and I'm pretty sure like every you know we named like all of them. You know? <laughs> yeah. Like we we're just like oh this one's nice, but you know I really like this one, and then somebody else would be like oh this one and this one are nice. Like we just kept going. Yeah. So we oh, um please feel free to share the links and and then tonight's giveaway we are returned um we are returned. That's not what I wanted to say. We um, all your base are belong to us. We have, <laughs> we have nice. our returning sponsors, be a D and D. So as we have done, um, 
every stream for the past uh, eight to nine weeks at this point, we're going to open up our giveaway and whoever wins gets to choose a design that you would like. They do have a new one out called Cosmic Cat. Um, super oh, cute. Yeah. And you, uh, I believe Beluga has already chosen that one, so she's going to be getting one of those in the mail. But um, you get to choose uh, the design of, of your liking and the size and everything. And yeah, you will be getting um, a t-shirt from Bia d d You should definitely check them out. Follow them on Instagram. All of the things. Uh, so let me just make sure I have this set. All right, so any other things I forgot? Oh, I am also playing in the uh, charity stream, Jinkies Candlekeep Mysteries. We are playing Mondays at 8 p.m. Eastern time over at Wesselhausen's channel. I will put that in here. We are trying to raise some funds um, for glisten.org. We've been playing all 17 of the adventures of the newly released Candlekeep Mysteries from uh, Wizards of the Coast. And this should last us through the end of July. Um, I didn't check in on on the, the goal from yesterday, last night's stream, but our hope is to make it uh, to pass the $1,000 um, by the end of next week's stream for sure. Um, so please come check us out. Uh, each session is sponsored by uh, D&D Beyond, so there is a giveaway every session um, of a digital copy of Candlekeep Mysteries. So you can let your friends know if you already have it and uh, just come, come join us. So, am I forgetting anything else? Sorry, there's so much. Nope, we are ready. All right, I'm gonna Roll do our those credits. I'm gonna do our little little intro, and then we'll get started. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay, we're back. You, you didn't do the hand thing. It's only it's only a thirty second like intro thingy. It's <laughs> sitting here talking about beans, my nose and shit. All right. So bear with me tonight. We've been in the car for. Uh, a three-hour ride home was uh, five hours. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> so a three-hour um, tour. <laughs> yeah, I, just thank God for fucking tablets, <laughs> keeping keeping little monsters at bay. All right, so we join our heroes of Wicked Independent Prestige Incorporated uh, after a. Um, one hell of a fight with, uh, not with the orcs, but uh, fighting alongside the orcs against a pack of frenzied, ravenous wolves. Uh, they, you were victorious. You took a uh, short break outside of the uh, the cave where the orcs reside. You had found out that um, the the wolf pack never comes this far south uh, to the hunting claw the orcs which is the orcs uh, clan name lands or even further south to where um the town was that you guys came from and it uh resides up with where the farmers called the old witch and the orcs called the wild one a uh druid named epom uh who by all accounts, everyone just kind of leaves her the fuck alone because nobody wants to mess with a druid who 
is kind of antisocial and mutters to herself a lot. But the wolves are known to reside in her valley, possibly even as pets. Um, but they were clearly in a frenzy, panic, um, just kind of all all running wild. And you were told to find her valley where her hut resides. You follow, the, you go back to the stream and uh, follow where it flows. And as you were following the stream, you were ambushed by on both sides of the stream by six, about five to six foot tall humanoid shaped. Later on, you found them to be some sort of plant creatures or twig foots, as uh, <laughs> Graxus uh, ended up calling them. And uh, now this this battle, they they were gun for Uma. She took uh, quite a bit of damage in this melee and. Elar summoned some demons to to help fend them off, and you guys did manage to to defeat your attackers, and we pick up right after that happens. So you are still here at the stream bed. This is just mere moments after uh, Elar sent the demons back to hell before they could pounce on you. You are sitting there and. Um, the bodies of your fallen uh, twig foots are laying there. And what do you do now? Graxus is going to turn and, and just call out and make sure everyone's okay. And say, uh, is everyone all right? Fine over here. Uh, Lars, I... fine as always. I think I got a splint in my foot on that one's face. <laughs> and then he'll, uh, he'll inspect one of them just to see what they actually, this one over here. All right. Just to kind of get a better sense of what these things were. Roll me an intelligence, Mr. Dragon Man. Mr. Hay of Dragon Man. That's... Oh, Ooh, damn. Oh, snap. <laughs> damn. Scary First noise. roll of the night. I see Gary. space and net. time. <laughs> he just <laughs> crosses his legs and just floats him through the air. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, so, yeah, I mean, you know, people don't give Gary enough due. They think he's just this big, dumb brute. But no, he goes over there. He leans, he leans over this thing. <laughs> what? Who says that? Grax didn't know that. that Grax Definitely is not to his him. face. It's way too big for anyone to have ever said that to his face. So you're 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 inspecting the carcass of the tree of the uh, twig foot and. Uh, you you have no idea what it is, but it is definitely a plant based creature. Uh, it it's it's like oozing like a sticky like black like not black but like a dark green. It's almost black kind of goo that has like a hint of like um, pine to it. You know, so it's kind of kind of syrupy smell. Um, it's like seems to be made of plant matter. And you definitely notice that the um, the the thorns that they were shooting at you were the same exact ones that were that you found embedded in the dead animals in the barn and and in the farmer's field. And then uh, the the uh, their arms they're they're like they kind of look like they're kind of look like branches. And instead of like fingers, like they're just these large thorny claws and they are all different shapes there is no like not like a bear paw or anything like that they're just all irregular shaped and they match again exactly the slash marks that were found on the horse carcasses um i'll pick up a couple of those thorns because i believe i had pulled a few out of the other animals in the barn. i think i pulled one out yeah i think so uh and I'll go, I'll relay all that information to everybody else. I'll hold out the thorns, the, the one thorn that I pulled out of the animal, and then the ones that I just picked up off these plant creatures. 
Nah, I'll say it seems that these were the same creatures that had killed those animals back in the barn. Uma will come up and like pat um, Gary on his arm and be like, good putting it together. Wow, that's impressive. Good job. You can never tell when she's being genuine or passive aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> I just can't tell. Now, I, now I'm in his head, we're like, Yo, people think he's dumb. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, does this mean we can go home? We're done, right? We killed the thing that killed the animals. We're good, right? We, we don't have to go to a witch now. I think we still need to go see the witch farm. Yeah. Okay, tell me. Yeah. Superb, uh, as you say, hard. Maybe you'll get to hit her hard. I would rather not is it a witch? I'm just, just saying. All right, just saying. Oh, hey. Just, just a reminder. Uh, while you guys are fighting these things, you, you did notice that the demons that Elar summoned to attack these creatures, these creatures completely ignored them and only focused on, like, the living, I guess demons are living, but the non-hellish creatures. Um, Uma will look over at Elar and be like, hey, that was a really cool trick. Where'd you get those, uh, those devils from? Is that something you can do trick. all the time? Trick. I'm sorry, a that trick is something a, a whore does for money. Illusion. <laughs> a whore? <laughs> <laughs> this thing is just gonna try to look down at like, What is a whore? Um What's a whore and what do they do for money? But that regardless, trick not a trick. It's exactly what I meant to happen. Well how'd you do it? Tricks can be intentional. Well with my hands, of course. Gary, I think I think I like need this. you to do it. I I don't think I'm getting through to him. Maybe he needs your Where more direct devil? communication style. Where'd the devils come from? Well Hell. <laughs> that was such an obvious answer. <laughs> Gary actually just wouldn't have seen coming. <clears throat> and you brought them here? Why did they attack me? Are we not? Well, they'll attack whoever is next to them. I would have thought you would have known to move out of the way when you saw a demon next to you. I have my own, and they don't hurt me. Not demons, guardians of the uh, sort. Paro's just gonna kind of go. He's got a point there, Gary. I mean, if I, I knew I liked this one. <laughs> If, he, if I had the spell slot open, I would just summon spirit guardians just to be, like, a dick. Just be like, <laughs> mine don't fucking hurt me. <laughs> but I don't have it. Um, Crax is just gonna look at Uma and just shake his head. It's just like this this one. This one's gonna be trouble. Uma, Uma looks over at Varro and is like, Ugh. Like, she really wants to ask him to kind of explain, but... <laughs> She's just like looking at him like No. He's he's on one leg, like trying to find the splinter. <laughs> Uma's gonna be like, Varo, get out of the water first. Come over here and I'll help you. She's just Oh. Come on. Thank you. So she's gonna look at his foot he, he while they're chatting. On the one leg the whole time. He's got his foot up in the air and he just hops through the water. <laughs> Is there anything else you guys gonna do in this area? Uh, <clears throat> no. I don't think so. Alright, so onward following the stream to the Druid's Valley. Do I find the splinter? 
Uh, roll for it. What am I rolling? <laughs> roll a d20. Oh. All right, all right, all right. Here we go. Nope. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> you did nothing. As a matter of fact, you thought you found it, but you, you were squeezing too hard, and you just drove it further in. Ew. <laughs> Before um, we go, Grex is just going to look at the uh, vegetable monster-looking things. And he's gonna look over at Varo, just perplexed, like... Are you... Are you gonna eat that? You're just gonna, like, point over towards the vegetable monster. Uh, that, that's, that's not a vegetable. It's plant. Yeah, it's but plant. vegetable Plants. means that it's edible. You're a vegetarian. Don't you eat leaves? I saw you eat leaves. I, I eat edible plants. That's that's obviously not edible. He what? says as as like the closest one is just like oozing dark green goo, <laughs> and with no leaves on it whatsoever. So I don't know. Like, Va Varo sees oh, no, no irony. I thought, it, I thought it had, I thought it had like leaves or something like that on it. I didn't he he, he thinks Gary is dead serious he, and he's like concerned that that gary thinks that this is a vegetable because he's only seen him eat meat so he's 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 concerned you know far only eats plants hmm? is it gary's not being serious <laughs> <laughs> oh he's just like you're not gonna take a piece of that put it in your pocket for later we'll snack on the road if it was made out of meat i mean Gr remember Garax is, is saying this with a full dire wolf haunch sitting and bleeding in his backpack right now. <laughs> so, we, so yeah, he, he's probably, like, half serious at least. Well, as the debate over veg what's a vegetable or not happens as you follow the river, we'll bring you over to this map here. Which, by and the way... You follow Uma's just gonna pretend like she got that splinter, like she's gonna use her, you know, healing magic to just make him feel like it's kind of like, oops, and then like, ah, and like a light <laughs> on her hand. Got it. She's like, you're fine. <laughs> so you guys uh, go back. Uh following the stream. You've been following the stream now for several miles as it winds its way beneath the old growth forest. Through the ages, the stream has formed a gentle valley with verdant forest hills rising and falling on either side of you. Rounding a bend around one such hill, you spy a dilapidated old round hut surrounded by a fenced overgrown garden. The low forest hills rise about... That's weird. Really written. Rise about and... Okay, rise about and the stream carves its way along a tall water carved bluff to the west the roots of trees growing atop the bluff jut out from the sides As you cut into the hillside to the east you spy a small cave entrance and let me just bring you guys to where you can actually see what I'm talking about alright so, right, let's put you here Yes, there you go. Just in a line, just charging across. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, yes. So yeah, on the. So this is. The first thing the. Um, there's a stream that carves its way along the water carved bluff to the west. Roots of trees growing atop the bluff, and then on the other side, this hillside over here. Uh, you see a small cave entrance, and you catch the glow of two pairs of eyes gazing watchfully at you from the closer cave to the east. Okay. So we see a hut and a cave on two separate sides of us. Actually, you, if you, somebody roll a perception. Uh -oh, you can all roll a perception, because you're probably all just gazing around this valley. The hut is definitely right in front of you. I roll. God damn. All right. So yeah, uh, this you definitely you see this. This is a cave over here, clearly, and like it says, like there's something in there. You see the eye shine 
of an animal in that cave. Uh, and apparently you're all focused on that or the hut. Varro is the only one who clearly notices that there is a another cave right over here on uh, the other bank uh, across the stream there, in, carved it, uh, into the hillside. Um, let's see. It's It was somewhat obscured by tree roots, but uh, Gary saw right through that shit. Varro. Varro saw right through that shit. <laughs> where, where was the the first cave? Why do, for some reason, I'm not seeing it. You Am might. It? It's, it's over here. I'm not sure. I mean, if you move, you it's might over be here. able to see it. Alright, I see what you know, I see yeah. the little door icon. So yeah, th this, this yeah, this is the one where you're seeing animal eye shine oh. from. And this one over here is kind of more hidden, um, but clearly a cave entrance that Varro was able to see. And oh yes, Varro, because you also rolled incredibly high in that, you notice that um, there is um, foot traffic between the hut and this cave over here across the river that like hasn't like you, you can see that clearly like there's like a trail that goes from the hut to that cave over there and the closest to the cave entrance you can see like um imprint like shoe imprints that haven't been washed away by rains or the river yet hey hey everyone uh looks like there's some traffic heading towards that that cave on the other side of the bank there do you want to go say hi to the the person who lives in this hut so we don't look like total creepers you get the impression that because of the growth around this hut um, she either doesn't maintain it at all but there is supposed to be like a kind of a garden there that's become overgrown so you know, you would find that kind of odd, um, or like it's just overgrown because there's nobody here to maintain it. You're not sure. She just could be sloppy. Yeah, we we should probably uh, see who's home before we march on their property. Um, as long as I'm not first. Well, you never know, Varro. It could be a, a, a good witch. Elar, do you want to talk to her, or do you want me to? You're muted, Elar. <laughs> no. I don't think Elar can talk right now. Okay. <laughs> 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 All right, I'll do it. Let's go. So we're going to march up to the front. All right. Can we move you or are you going to move yourselves? I can move myself. I didn't know if you wanted to move the group. Yoink. Whee. As... <laughs> <laughs> Again, as you pass this cave over here, um, just... You hear rustling, and this you see you see the eye shine just following you, not making a noise, but just just keeping an eye on you. About how thick is the brush outside of the entrance to the hut? Yeah, like like it, like how overgrown is it? Like is it like big bushes, like and leaves and tall grass? Uh, let's see. All right, so this is a thatch roof hut. The hut is roughly 25 foot in diameter with a lone south-facing door and four shuttered windows set around it. Uh, a stone smokestack protrudes through the roof and vines cling to its side. A fence made of falling timber surrounds the hut, containing an overgrown garden within. Uh... Gateway twenty feet from the door allows polite entrance through the front, uh, through the fence. Though the fence could be easily jumped, a large, recently dug hole can be seen in the right front quadrant of the overgrown forest. The flagstone path 
leads from the gate to the hut's door, a similar patch circle, a similar path of circles around the garden. Two trees in the garden flank the flagstone path, providing direct shade to the hut's door. A six-foot-tall sunflower, six-foot-tall sunflowers are planted on either side of the gate at each of the corners of the garden fencing. Uh, and as you approach, I don't know if that answered how overgrown it is. Uh, as you approach, the um, the sunflowers turn and face you, and in the center of them, instead of like the big white part of the sunflower, uh, the big dark part of the sunflower, uh, there is a gigantic eight-inch diameter eyeball gazing at you. Thank you for the oh, raid, ladies of D&D. Thank you. Hey, Welcome thank in. You. So Elar has found his voice, and now he's going to walk up right um, to these flowers with the eyeballs and look at them and just go, "Hello, how are you?" So, uh, which one are you doing that to? There's one in each corner. Mm, let's you say... said there's one in each corner and right by the the entrance to the walkway are, the, are those also sunflowers what i'm seeing like here oh, yeah. and yep. here those are also sunflowers yeah so there's one yeah right in front of you so yeah so uh, yeah whichever one you're having trouble with foundry so i can't see anything right now all right yeah so you okay you you can walk up to the to the um and, and they're tall they're sunflowers so they're like like how tall those things get like seven eight feet like they're pretty mm. tall so uh yeah you just say hello to it but i mean it's just it just kind of like peers down is and, and they don't blink they just they have no eyelids it's just an eyeball in the center of the flower and it's just looking at oh, you and even the better. other one is also looking at you and well eli is gonna wait for a response and not blink as well <laughs> <laughs> ah i see what's happening here nice staring contest I'm very good at these. I'm just gonna keep staring at them. <laughs> it's just staring back at you. <laughs> Someone's gonna be looking from like one to the other. Like, you're doing great. Keep it up. And then she's gonna turn towards the front. I used to love to play this with my brother. <laughs> yes, I'm very good at this. <laughs> She's gonna turn towards the front door and just yell out, not jumping over the fence or anything, or the gate. She's like, hello! Is anybody there? Good morning! You yes, I it. tried that. I said hello to these these uh, large creatures here. <laughs> you were just uh, there, very quiet. It's just silent. Like all you, you just hear. They don't like me. The sound of running water from the from the river, and just the, you know. Have I offended you, Allie? Creatures. Why will you not speak with me? I don't think they have mouths to speak with you, Lord. Oh, that's a good just observation. Eyes. Just eyes. Just, just eyes. Don't take it personally. Excuses. <laughs> Beings on this plane are full of excuses. Anyways, let's go. I don't like them either, so what's, let's go. What's the eyeballs in the cave doing? Uma's gonna like look over, like like they're just it's it's just seeing where you are. Like you don't see them constantly, but like every once in a while you'll look over and. Like, you'll see that, like, it's come back to see where you are. Um, did everybody saw that, right? Everybody sees these eyes. Yeah, okay. especially because you guys walked past that, that cave. You, like, it, it, it just, it just washed you. So, like, just the reflection of light off of some animal's eyes. All right. So Uma's going to turn towards that cave instead and go, Good morning! Hello! <laughs> Do you live in this house? And then start walking in that direction. Slowly, non-threatening, as always. All right. 
Uh, you do. Graxis is going to follow close to her, like usual. Make sure she uh, doesn't get herself into trouble. As, like I said, like I've said before, like that Leonardo Di Car- uh, DiCaprio meme where it's just like walking. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, she's so, like, happy and self confident that he's just, like, she's gonna get eaten by something someday. No. So, yeah, you get no response. Um, but as Va- you get. Varro's just gonna lean over to Ela. Three minutes, 45 seconds. You're doing amazing. Keep this up. <laughs> it's gonna break any moment now. I know. Just a little longer. Uh, Thank as you. you As you approach it, he, like, the eyes recede more deeper into the cave so you don't see the shine anymore as as you're getting closer like it's like whatever's in there is backing away mm-hmm. and then also uh if you're all whoever is walking towards that direction you see that the sunflower eye stalks just again just slowly turn and watch as you go away and then like once you're about few squares out from from the property they all kind of like turn back and like to look away from you and just go back to like a sunflower resting position kind of turning their faces eyes up to the sun (laughs) your exes is gonna turn and just say quietly to uma just so she can hear say uh i don't like anything about this uma uh, she's gonna look and be like, Gary! What else is new? Come on, let's go! <laughs> she's gonna grab his arm and just kind of, like, walk forward with him. Like, it's gonna be fine. <laughs> We're always fine. You yeah, worry too so, much. Correct, uh... <laughs> will just grumble. <laughs> 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 just... How's that? How's that haunch doing in your in your pack? Are you gonna cook it? Or are you gonna just eat it raw? I'm not sure yet. I haven't decided. Well, maybe we can. Maybe once we figure out what this thing is inside the cave, maybe we can use it as bait. Hey, that's a great idea. Let's go get closer. Some of it, not all of it. <laughs> All right, so uh, how close are you gonna get? Um, I mean, Uma is not stupid, so you know she she's who she is, but she's not dumb. Um, like right about directly in front, so like right about here. All right. So, okay, can so I'm gonna leave myself there. Whoops. Oh, oh Jesus! That's... Oh God! Go no. back! <laughs> <laughs> she just gets so the two in the guard. Grabbing all four. Just want a couple. Are you? Uh, are Varro and Elar just still standing at the having a staring contest with this thing? Or are they going over there? Uh, v- Varro is refereeing Elar's uh, <laughs> staring contest okay. to make sure there is no shenanigans going on. Big John McCarthy. Elar appreciates it. <laughs> okay, so uh, I don't know if They're you're going to win, but. Uh, yeah, you're just you're just sitting there, still staring. True, true and, bonding uh, moments happening right now. Varro's sitting there like this. Because <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, if they're like six feet tall and and Eli's like six six, like he is like five six, so he's like. Well, they're like they're like seven seven eight feet tall. They're oh yeah, like, he's oh, he's straight straight up chin high. <laughs> <laughs> Waiting to see. <laughs> Like, all right, so Uma, I believe you you can see in from where you are, right? Um, yes. Okay, so you, because you move closer, but not too close, and as you look in, you can see that this is a den, um, a dire wolf den, and um, you can't see, I don't think you can see all the way in, but you can see closest to you there are two dire wolves and now you're closer one is standing there it is it is now growling at you and it's like you know in a hunched defensive posture but it's not moving towards you um and roll a perception just her 
Just her. Okay. Right. Um, okay. So yep, yeah, with that, so again, it's it's in a defensive posture, it's growling at you. It's like Arr, Arr. that was that was the growling right there. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. So it's trying it's trying to intimidate you. Uh, not moving forward though. Uh, you do notice behind it, um, the second one is laying down on the ground, and that was a pretty good roll. So you actually notice that. Uh, it must be female because it has a litter with it. Like three three or four pups that you can see. Okay. Um, so Uma is gonna look up at, at Gary, grab his arm and be like, oh, There are puppies in there. There are puppies <laughs> in there. We should leave them alone. This is not Sorry Mama And she's gonna like pull him back in the direction of uh, Varro and Elar. Yeah, she does it. He's gonna reach back and grab, like, start to grab that so you, I shouldn't, the meat, the sh we shouldn't, the dire wolf meat. No, nope, let's go, let's go. <laughs> like, like, I will like say also with your really good roll, I'm not saying they want dire wolf meat, but you will notice that these wolves are a little kind of uh, emaciated. They don't look like they've eaten. Um, Oh. And it's also of note that you know these ones weren't with the pack that attacked you. I mean, clearly they're all of the same pack, but these ones stayed behind to you know because they're young. We're too young. Whatever happened here spooked all sixteen of the other ones, but these ones stayed here, and it looks like they haven't eaten. Okay, so. As Uma is pulling him away, she like stops and looks at him. And then is like, "Wait, what does he have? Is it wolf meat on the back of him?" Never mind. She's just gonna be like, "Oh no, never mind." Um. Did 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 Gary see what was in there? Because she just said puppies. So I, would, I mean, if Gary just... wants to get where, stand where she was and peer in, and then he would, he could uh, see. You might have to roll to see if you can see the puppies. Well, no, I mean, do, would Uma have told him? All she said was puppies. Yeah, all she said like, was puppies. And I was like, nope, 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 let's go, let's go. So, <laughs> all right, well, then Grax is just going to be confused. That's all. He's just going to be like, puppies, what? There are puppies in that cave. Let's go back. All right, so you go back to the gate of the hut? Yeah, just to go check on Elar and Varro, who have not moved. Oh, yeah, as, around as, the corner, as, as... Varro's going, eight minutes. Eight minutes, <laughs> kid. You got this. This is nothing. Again, as, as you as you get closer I've to the hut, I've made it 20. The, uh, the eye stalk on the corner, That's again, incredible. turns right at you, and it just follows... Follows your movements around the hut, right back to where you are standing. As well as this other one on the corner, it, it's it turns and looks at you. So um, Uma's gonna say, "Hey everybody, there are puppies in that cave, so no need to worry. They do look a little bit hungry." Elar, how are you doing? Are you winning? <laughs> I am so winning. Not even tired. Varo, no no shenanigans. This whole time. This whole time. This is over eight minutes. I am in shock. That right is now. Like, impressive. I I would have thought that the, the stock would have would have folded over by now, but it, it's it's staying strong this whole it hasn't time. Hasn't wilted yet. I've been I'm, trying to I'm wilt shocked. it with my eyes. I say just give it more time. But we might need to cut it a little short because I think there's another spot to go check out. I just don't want to go into this uh, gate here if nobody's home and there's a witch. I am perfectly all right with not going into the witch's house. <laughs> so, Elar... Maybe we just call you the de facto winner, and then we follow these tracks to the other spot. Wait, I, I think I know how we need to settle this. 
flower? Do you forfeit? Say nothing if yes. <laughs> flower says nothing. <laughs> I think, Perfect I, solution. <laughs> Um, you are the smartest of the beings yeah. I have met thus far. Varro's gonna yeah. go up to Eli's wrist, grab it, raise it up. Yes, I am the champion. We may but, move on now. But because gonna... it's like so so high, Eli's arm only goes up to about like right here. <laughs> Damn it, you did that. I was gonna make. I was gonna use Talmaturgy and make the flower talk. <laughs> like, he's gonna like ventriloquist throw his voice like never coward <laughs> <laughs> but in the Let interest of forever. I know in the interest of time because I know that's exactly <laughs> long four like, hours never. later <laughs> literally, literally. <laughs> yeah. oh my God. great job Elar your brother would probably be proud I think maybe I don't know him at all so let's go Bad because I beat his record. Oh. So we're heading up following the tracks. Okay. Yeah. So, like, uh, you would notice the tracks go, you know, kind of follow the way you guys went. Like, some some go off towards the, um, the wolf den, and then um, the other ones, like, go off to where Varro saw the cave in the bluffs. So mm -hmm. It's not like, it's not like a, it's, you can just tell that it's a well-walked path, like this druid would walk this, go, go to the wolf den, go to the cave on a daily basis type thing. Okay. Let's go. Alright. Okay, I'll just uh. As we walk, uh, Garaxis is going to ask Uma what kind of puppies. What kind of puppies? They were very cute puppies. Um, I couldn't really tell the color, but I'm pretty sure one of them, at least one of them, is named Sam. And <laughs> they were very sweet looking, although I think they could probably do with some food. So that's what the kind of puppies. What, really what species. Really cute canine oh. puppies. When when Varro hears puppies, he's gonna go, Are we getting a puppy? <laughs> I don't know what marching order you guys want to go in here. <laughs> and as he right. says that, <laughs> totally on accident, just by happenstance, Grax's stomach is gonna like rumble super loud because <laughs> he's hungry. At the as soon as he says, Are we getting a puppy? You're just gonna yeah. Of Grax's stomach. <laughs> I've never had a puppy before. Uh, are we are we getting a puppy? Like, I've had puppies for the group. Uma will show her potion of animal friendship that she had. She's like, we could, but after. That would be wicked awesome. Elar, have you ever had a puppy? Or a pet, a pet of any kind, any kind at all. Pet. Um, well, yes. Once I did have a pet of sorts. And what was its name? <laughs> it oh, his it, his name. It wasn't your brother, was it? Uh, no. It was not my brother. What was its name? Oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I just pictured G Garax is asking that, but like not really caring. It's just like, well, Uma asked and like, didn't yeah. get an answer. It's like, what, what was its name? <laughs> His name was Reginald. Wow. That is quite the name. Majestic. Yes. He, he was majestic, I suppose. I'm right, just going to lean over to him. What's majestic mean? It's a different way of saying tasty. I was talking to Uma. Oh. 
because you're the one who said it. <laughs> Gotta specify. If you did, I didn't hear. Sorry. <laughs> Uma is, is going to be like, Majestic means royal. Like, like amazing. What kind of, of pet was it, Elar? What kind of pet? It was a great pet. Oh, okay. Navarro, you try. Was it, was it a demon? Was it a demon? No. No one has demons for pets. So, you ridiculous. Uh, so, uh, this uh, majestic pet? It was a baby demon. Pet? <laughs> Do, do you still have this majestic pet? Well, he's all grown now. Now he's a, he's a... He was actually one of the demons that was here. Reginald. So I was right. <laughs> I hope we didn't... But he was a baby demon at the time. You gotta warn us, because, I mean, I was gonna, like, slice it in two. I wouldn't want to kill your pet. Well, he's not my pet any longer. Oh. He's an adult, an adult demon, and he has his own life now. I see. Yeah, he's, he's out doing demon things. Yeah, with his demon friends. <laughs> I mean, not call, I encourage not him or dad anymore before they have you know before midnight. Encourage him not, not to go out on these raids, but it's right. <laughs> You're an awkward fellow, Elar. <laughs> says this giant seven and a half foot tall spiky half dragon. And he's just gonna walk past. Uh, and she's gonna look at Elar and be like, he doesn't mean that. What when he says awkward he means um he means unique and special. Without turning around, he's just gonna go, No, I don't <laughs> <laughs> He like, does Gary, are you leaving this conversation and just going like right into the cave entrance to escape it. Yeah, I'm gonna, he's going to go right to the very mouth of the cave and then peek in. See what he sees. All right. So you uh you peek into the mouth the mouth of the cave and you're hit with a horrible stench of rot. It overwhelms even your senses. It's like what you smelt in the barn, but worse. Uh and you can see it's a mess of a cavern. It's dimly lit from the outside sun. It's roughly 40 foot in diameter with a 30 foot high ceiling. The cavern floor is littered with rotten vegetable matter and the corpses of several twisted abominations that are scattered about. At the rear of the cavern are several workbenches with the various uh, laboratory detritus strewn about. Beakers, flasks, bamboo piping, detritus. notebooks, Detritus. Good one. <laughs> and now I lost my place. Uh, yes, notebooks and various parchments are scattered upon them. Several shelves covered with poetry, uh, pottery, my bad, um, and other beakers full of plant matter and various other objects. From the entrance, it's clear to you that this is the Mad Druid's lab. Further investigation is required if you are to find in the information you seek. Yeah. Um, yeah, he'll take a step in and then we'll investigate. You gonna warn anybody? Just stepping in? Uh, it does. It smells bad, but it's nothing that I don't think he can handle. I, I, unless you make me roll for something, I'm assuming he can handle it. Well, um, um, gonna make you all. As you walk in, I'll uh, do a, a no. constitution. Because okay. it's bad. Like, right. well, <laughs> the smell of is. It, I don't think any creature is comfortable with the overbearing smell of death. Okay. <laughs> no matter how, like. Are you. It's like, I'm a talk. Are you, op no, are you opening this? Oh, yeah, I thought. Okay. Uh, He's going to take a step in and just go. Uh, it smells pretty bad. <laughs> it's like kind of like nonchalantly. And then we'll see what happens with the 
All right, yeah. So all of you roll a Constitution. Uh, uh, if you roll yeah. some one, I'm gonna laugh my ass off because you're like, yeah, it smells pretty good. Plus one, plus one to all saves because you are all within ten feet of me. Yeah. Oh. oh no! That's a five. That's a five. So yeah, he's so Greg just walked No, that was an ability me. check. You rolled the wrong one. Oh, what did I do? It says con ability check, so it's the wrong one. Oh yeah. Yep. Oh. Elar, oh, yeah. you need to you need to do a save too. He uh he did. Oh okay. Oh they no nope, ability. ability. Yep. Both yep. of you rolled ability checks. Oh. Hey Gronk, welcome in. <laughs> now you rolled an ability check again. You did it again. Oh okay. Yeah, roll again. Save. I, I know, but that's what I—that's what I'm hitting. So, no, it shouldn't be under the saves, not checks. Oh, yeah. because I'm I'm using the. Uh, oh oh no. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Well, because I was hitting, yeah, I was hitting under uh, <laughs> checks. You know what I'm saying? With the, the whatchamacallit. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, so I called it. I was going to roll in that one. I, I rolled in that right. one. So, I mean, you you all walk into this cave, and, and you're you're taken aback by the stench. Like, it, it's it's just that it's a combination of, like, rotting plant matter. We all know that smell, like, bad compost smell. But then also there are, like I said, there are... Like oh, but we mangled are nice, and we will attend to your abomination every, every corpses move. on the ground. Like you don't know what the fuck these things are, but they are just like disgusting. They're torn apart. Whatever happened here um, didn't happen like within the last 24 hours or so, and because it's in like a dark, dank cave, the the smell is just really hard to stomach. But you guys, you 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 just find the fortitude within you, maybe. You know, put a little something up to your nose and walk in. But at Gary being the first one walking in, he's standing tall. And I don't know what it is, Gary. Like, you know, it's just stomach things can be can can be just so so. so Ale has saving throw up. Did he Gary, ask, is Gary gonna make a saving normally, throw? Normally, the 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 strongest amongst you when it comes to just horrible smells strolls in. Like fucking brass balls, like he's not a care in the world, and just goes <laughs> right all over his. Back I want him to continue walking forward, but still yakking, so his head is turned to the side and just pukes all down the side of the wall as he continues <laughs> to walk, forward. just like ladder. Oh, just puking everything up out of his giant stomach as he just continues to walk forward. You know, breakfast, rations, all of that. Just a wishbone for some reason. It's all over the wall. <laughs> just <laughs> random little <laughs> bones. <laughs> Uma is just like, uh... Oh, God. <laughs> Okay, so. So what did everybody else roll? Twenties and twenties. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Well, because all I had, all I could see, fucking scrolling up, is all my fucking stupid <laughs> ability checks and not my saving throws. <clears throat> all right. So you guys, uh, yep. So you're in there. It like there, like I said, it's a mess. It smells horrible. Um, there's just plant matter and carcasses. On, all over the ground and uh, again you see back there what looks to be the lab well, let's check it out I guess well uh, is Grax just still throwing up at this point uh, no he's, he's <laughs> emptied he's emptied out okay. he's just, just going to ask the same thing <laughs> are you all set yes. ready Gary your Hat on the back. Sorry, that, just, that, that conversation just really, uh, really made me sick for some reason. I'm gonna walk forward and uh, try to stop. Are you people. sure it's not that horrendous smell, Gary? <laughs> no. <laughs> well, it was. I, mean, this is, I think it might have been something he ate. 
I mean, this is worse when you take your boots off after we've been Sometimes. hiking for a long time. <laughs> Sometimes when I eat something bad... Max just doesn't wear boots. I you don't make boots his size. Alright, so Gary, as you walk to the back of the lab, uh, you know, stiffening yourself up and wiping your chin, you, uh, roll me a deck save. Oh, Christ. Should've known that. Hope for not more than a one. <laughs> oh. Yeah, so. Is that plus one? It's a ten. Does that matter? Yeah, so <laughs> as Gary walks <laughs> walks by, uh, you're not paying attention to anything on the ground, so you do not notice the um, vines that creep up. And they. What do these things do here? Uh, hold on. Why is this not showing? Okay. Oh, one more second. All right, so you do not notice these vines that slowly reach up and start grabbing onto you. And what do they do? So that one misses, but don't worry, it gets a... It's a multi-attack. Don't worry. Don't worry. <laughs> Elar's never worried. I can't believe not one of those <laughs> fucking attacks hit. So Gary, you you <laughs> Elar can't believe failed. That. You failed your fucking deck. <laughs> so as you as you as you're walking without looking at the floor. These vines reach up and they start to swing at your legs. And again, without even fucking noticing, they're like, <laughs> you're <"What?"> you're <laughs> stepping over each fucking swing. <laughs> and, <laughs> and as you turn around, everyone is in shock because everybody saw that. <laughs> Correct. He's like... going to play it off. I was going to say, Correct is just going to turn and just look. And just totally pretend, because he shamed himself puking down the wall. <laughs> so he's just gonna turn and just like, like you know, like the, hey, just that goddamn good. The, the <laughs> whole know? time, Varro's doing like that Malcolm Reynolds meme where he's like, <laughs> <laughs> and Uma's just like, right. and then at you the guys, end, just starts. Full no, for initiative. <laughs> Like the strut that he has, like is is what helped. Like this, <laughs> like that's what saves him. God, the, the, the drag uh, yeah. So go ahead, roll initiative. And you guys, um, because now that it's moved, you notice that it is the same type of rot fungus that was in the barn on the horses. And we'll just do one quick round, and then we're gonna. All right, let's get some music going. No, I should have known better than just walk across. God. <laughs> it's like the first. Do you think it's the first cave I've ever walked into? Goddamn. All right, uh, and combat begins. Uma, go. Okay. Hold on. That might be a little loud. Whoops. Okay. Um, shit. So, Uma is going to... Um, she's actually just gonna... Dash forward here. And... And do a multi-attack on this guy. On this thing. Yay. Oops. I hadn't rolled initiative yet. This is actually supposed to be my turn. Oh. Oh. That's my fault. Yep, Elar goes I first. Elar goes right. first. Elar. Go ahead, Elar. You can move yourself back, Uma. Uma's gonna start to move, and then Elar's just gonna go... <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> 
And then interrupt her, like I just did to you. And then... <laughs> you out of the way. <laughs> and then... I mean, you already know what he's gonna do. Right. <laughs> Blast it! She's gonna... Oh, shit. Hey, oh, oh, nice! Yeah. <laughs> Natural nice. 20! Nice. Oh, wait, so is that crit it? That's, yeah. uh... Does 15 hit it? Yes! <laughs> so that's 14 right off the bat. Yeah, right? So 14 and 7, so 21. 21. Nice. So yeah, 21. Yeah. Was that one attack? Oh, yeah, one. one attack? You have, you have your that second uh, shot, right? It was both Eldritch. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Was... Yep. So 21 total damage. Put the finger gun too. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, Elar puts his hand up in normal con fashion. Two, two powerful blasts of energy comes out and he's like, <laughs> hits this thing. It's a plant, so it doesn't really do anything, but it's like <laughs> tendrils. <just> go... <laughs> now. Does they make that sound, I hope? They do, they go. And then Eli is going to look at Uma and go, now proceed. <laughs> He's gonna go and charge forward. Um, charging forward and multi-attack on this this thingy. So that is uh, with her great sword. A twenty-four to hit. Nice. Damage is four. Okay. Don't you get to re-roll ones and twos? Oh shit, I do. Yes, I do. Um, so as part of my, I don't know if you need me to explain that. Do you want me to say it? Uh, no, I don't remember exactly what, but I remember that it is a thing that you have. Yes. Um. I think me... it's great weapon master. No, savage attack. Uh, no, that savage attacks is uh, if I get an, a crit. Um, get an extra oh. damage die. Yeah, so... Uh, or it might be great weapon fighting. It's great weapon fighting. Yeah. You can re-roll a, uh, a one or a two on damage dice. As long as I have two hands. So I'm going to re-roll that. And that's better. So, seven points of slashing damage for the first one. And... Okay. An 18 to hit. Alright. For 12 points of slashing damage for the so second. seven and then 12. Hold on, let me just check something. Yes, seven and 12. 25. Um, 22. 20, 19. <laughs> I feel 19. like I was at an auction for a second. <laughs> so like, 20, uh, going on another uh, 19. 60, uh, uh, six, 67 points of damage on that first one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> it's been a day. All right. Uh, anything else? No. That's it. Alright. Uh, Gary. Uh, Gary is going to... He's just gonna toll the dead. I'll just... This is, uh... <clears throat> target creature needs to make a wisdom saving throw. Of... Ah, uh, shit. What is it? 14, I think. Spell DC is 14, so I believe, yeah. So it's a wisdom saving throw or right. take. Hold on. It's being really slow right now. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, it'll roll like a nat 20 or something like that. It'll be my luck after that nat 1. So save. I don't even know how that... Zero? If, if it's got negative. 
Yeah, <laughs> it rolled a zero. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, it'll take two d two two d twelve. So what I've got to do is I'll roll it here because when I roll that, it's not going to count that. It's thirteen. So he'll just kind of reach out and just do that, like almost like that Vader, like squeeze. You know what I mean? Like the like the force crush. Instead of like pointing, he'll just like crush like that. And it, it like causes bells, right? Like this these. Doom. Yeah, it says uh, bells fill the air around it for a minute. Yep. Yeah. The the sound of the Undertaker fills yeah. this cavern, <laughs> and, and yes, so. I, it, it just it again it withers you it, you can tell that it feels it feels the pain even though it doesn't have the uh, the anatomy to uh, express it vocally. All right, and then um, before his turn ends, he'll just yell, "Hit it hard, Varro!" <laughs> Someone's gonna step out of the way. Oh, is it Varro's turn? I, Varro, I yeah, didn't know. Varro. I, I didn't know if he was going to do sorry, a bonus yeah, my action turn or anything. I, no, sorry, I said that and then I took a sip of water. Um, yeah, no, um, no bonus action. Nothing. Uh, Varro is going to straight up uh, Naruto run towards this thing. <laughs> um, uh, and minding that even though Uma got out of the way, uh, he's pretty light, so he's actually just going to run up off her back and... Both attacks, double stomp, and bonus attack, another stomp. So he's going to try and stomp this yard, like, right now. So it's... And Uma's going to yell, first... oh, shit, son! First attack is an 11. Okay. And that is 6 damage. All right. And second attack... 17. You're right. Another 5 damage. And he's going to do it one more time. For another 10 to hit. Okay. So that's 8. So what's that? 19 altogether. All right. Just Excellent. So. Stomping out the weeds. Gary literally com comes off of Uma's back, stomping out the weed, just blah, blah, blah. He's, he, like, he is literally just kicking up this mush of just green matter. <laughs> he's just kicking it up into the air. Uh, Uma's right next to him, so she's getting a little, she's getting a little plant goo on her. And uh, he's sitting there stomping. He's and, laughing. Uh, was there any, <laughs> was there anything else? Uh, Var was just gonna quickly, like, brush that, that, Dirt off of Uma's shoulder real quick. No thanks. <laughs> All right, awesome. So, yeah, uh, the you, you just like the one in the barn. You were able to just snuff this out. You're now familiar that these are um, plant uh, the rotting fungus plants that camouflage themselves. Uh, you can see that this one's grown across the cavern floor, like onto and in between and out of like the corpses and other pieces of plants that are in here and all right so and as you are celebrating his victory over the stomping of the plant monster from the ceiling drops down this massive you have no idea what the fuck this is it is a bizarre, twisted mutation that is part troll, part goblin, part plant, and part you don't know what the fuck. And it just, with lightning speed, like, you... There is... Nobody saw this thing coming. Just drops down from the ceiling, and it uh, does a multi-attack on Uma. And... Varro's just gonna go, What the fuck is your problem, kid? <laughs> Ah, <laughs> uh, shit. So it's going to do... Wait, if this is the kid, where's the parent? <laughs> it's 
so we're, we're yeah. elf Eli. A anyone under a hundred is a kid <laughs> all right fair point i knew i liked you uma what's your ac 16. all right so it uh it jumps down and it just does this. I know what it is. Fucking all sorts of these things put together. Part plant is like. I know, but it came through so loud. It's it's like that scene in Total Recall when Arnold Schwarzenegger has his space suit. Broken and he's getting his eyeballs <laughs> decompressed. <laughs> That's the noise I'm gonna make for now on. <laughs> and it brings down its one of its many fists onto Uma, uh, with um, not a. I think it said get to the chopper. It um, <laughs> causing ten damage uh, as it just really catches you by surprise and. and you know, makes you see stars. It brings its other hand down. You manage to dodge that one. Um, you're still a little disoriented from the first strike. And now it is uh, going to try to grab you. So, um... No, touchy-touchy. Uh, Come on <laughs> up. So, grappling is uh, strength first strength, yes? Uh... It's, uh... It'll be uh, strength versus the athletics. person being grappled has choice of acrobatics or athletics. All right, so roll one of those. We'll see if it grabs you. All right, hold on. Just double checking. Okay, so strength, uh, athletics or acrobatics. Athletics, okay. Yeah, it's a strength check for me, so. Fun times with a fucking four. All right. So, <laughs> don't worry, because it rolled a nat 20. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it, 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 it jumped down from the ceiling lightning fast. It knocked you really good in the head, causing 10 damage. It swipes over you with another arm, and you just, just barely managed to jump out, like, dodge that one. But then two other arms more about your size uh, grab you with amazing strength and it jumps back up on the ceiling and begins to crawl away in this direction and we'll pick up again next Tuesday oh wait a minute so it, it just like ganked Uma and is like trying to like scoop it's hungry yo we can't stand for this <laughs> no like take take Varro, take Gary. No, you can't, Again. You can't be taking Uma. No. She's little. She's the smallest. It's the easiest. It's the easiest prey. It's not gonna come take well, this dragon. She she <laughs> might be shorter. She might be shorter than Varro, but I mean Varro's like 120 pounds soaking wet. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, Gorax, he can kick Gorax wicked is... wicked hard though. He can kick wicked hard like a mule wicked kid. Hard. When he, I, this sees, thing is when he sees this thing, taxes. this is a large abomination of a fucking beastie. <laughs> when Garaxus sees that, like, it's trying to get it, you, this, his roar of anger is just going to fill this fucking cavern. He is not going to... Like, like, across the ceiling, it looks back at, it turns back at Gary and it goes... I love you, I love It's just... <laughs> it's just, that's what this is going to turn into. Just, it goes blah blah in the direction. <sighs> just back and forth for three hours. Just screaming at each other. Oh my god. <laughs> Alright, so we had a giveaway. Uh, yeah. Um. <laughs> <laughs> we got door napped. <laughs> uh, so, our word of the week, by the way, is going to be stomp courtesy again of our of our good friend A. Falcone. Uh, it's not gonna be yet. Huh? It's not gonna be what? That's a that's a whole thing. <laughs> you're right, you're right. It's not a word. Um stomp. so stomp is gonna be our, our word of the week. Um but in the meantime, we are also going to do our giveaway, which 
just as a quick reminder to everybody, you're going to want to type uh, hashtag Bia d and to enter into tonight's giveaway. Here's our little, uh, oh, you can still hear the cave sounds. That's all right. Son of a bitch, I forgot to queue up our goddamn screen again, so it's just going to sit here quiet. Okay, we're back. Um, so... We've got uh, only a couple people who have entered. Hey, that gamer, Cher. Thank you so much for gracing us with your presence, Cher, the gamer. And making the distinction between Cher the gamer and Cher the singer. I don't see any distinction. So, um, <laughs> type hashtag Bia d and I'm going to say that we have four people who have entered, and I only actually recognize one of the names. So... That is that is awesome. Um, hello, new viewers. Hello, yes, hello. welcome in. I feel like something weird happened with our uh, stat thing today because it's not showing up right. Okay, so I'm gonna close the giveaway, and we are going to pick a winner, and it's just gonna show up in chat. So here we go. Nice. Oh wow. Oh. That welcome out. in. <laughs> Welcome, here's a shirt. Congratulations. <laughs> Welcome to the Dirty 30s. You have won a t-shirt from our good friends at Bia D and D. You can go check out their um go check out their website. And basically what I'll need from you and you can DM the Nat 30s uh on Twitch is um your name, your address, and then which design you would like and the um, size and color and whether you want short sleeves or long sleeves for your t-shirt. Um, and then I just forward all of that along to be a D&D &D and they send it straight to you. So please go check them out. They have a cosmic cat um, design that they just came out with. And then you'll see um, Garaxis currently has a uh, wing buffet design that they recently also came out with. So. I'm gonna turn this cave sound down. I'm crazy. It's still there. All right. Um, okay, so I'm gonna go to our credits and just thank everybody who has come by tonight. Um, we appreciate all of you. I'm also going to be looking up who we are going to raid next. So multitask here. So Gronk at KNB, thank you for the host. Raids, thank you, ladies of D and D, for the raid tonight. And who do we want to raid? We're gonna raid. We're gonna steal you all and raid to go somewhere. I don't know yet. Black and Forge. That one sounds good, and I don't think we've done them yet. No, it doesn't sound familiar. No, it's, uh, it doesn't ring yeah. any bells. All right, let's raid Black and Forge. For those of you who don't yet know, um. I am going to be doing some DM prep on Thursday with Beluga, who's going to make a an NPC. Um, she is from the Role Players Guild, who you should definitely go check out. Uh, let me do a shout out there first before I jump us over the Role Players Guild. Um, and so yeah, we're going to create an NPC and potentially um, have a little guest spot sometime in the future for our main campaign on Saturdays. Uh, definitely check oh, out our, cool. check, check out our, our, um, Patreon and everything. You can check it out at that link that I have in there for our link tree. And our T public goes on sale tomorrow for two days. So if you're interested in picking up any of our silly merch, please do so while it's on sale. Save yourself some bucks. Yes, do that. Check out all of our links. And um, if you are looking for the VODs, uh, patrons get two-week early access to all of our VODs, and we will have some special ones that you know are patron-only in the future as well. Um, but you can check out the uh, our old VODs on our YouTube page, which you can also find from our link tree. So please it's do that. It's all in the link tree. It's all in the link tree. So we are going to raid with our 17 viewers. Thank you so, so much, everybody. We'll see you on Thursday and then again on Saturday as we continue with the Bums of Greenest. And have a good night. Night. Have a wicked good night. Thanks, <laughs> thanks for the follow. <laughs>
Yes, Peter Merchist, you should get some silly merch. <laughs> oh my god. So incredibly tired tonight. <laughs> I'm usually able to, yeah. to go through it, but... Ooh.